In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your timing chain tensioner on this Toyota Corolla. Now, just as a disclaimer, if your timing chain tensioner has failed completely, you're going to want to inspect your other timing components and potentially even replace them. But for us, it's only leaking because of this O-ring. And instead of just replacing this O-ring, it is recommended that you just replace the whole timing chain tensioner. And you don't have to disassemble the whole timing chain. I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's a lot easier than it seems. So let's get started. This timing chain tensioner can be found on the back side of the engine where my flashlight is shining. Before we start unbolting the tensioner, what I want to do is release a little bit of pressure off of it. So I'm gonna take a 19 millimeter socket, put it on the harmonic balancer on the crank bolt and spin it clockwise just a little bit so I can release pressure off of that tensioner. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna stop right here. Again, I just wanted to put tension on the non-tensioning side and, and give it a little less tension on the tensioner side. Now let's take a 10 millimeter socket and remove the two nuts that hold this tensioner. Don't remove them all the way individually. Break them free and remove them little by little. I'm gonna go a couple threads on this one, break free this lower one, go a couple threads on that one, and I'm just gonna go back and forth because I don't want to put uneven pressure on these studs. So I have both of the bolts backed out a little bit, but it looks like this tensioner is stuck on here. So what I'm gonna do is come in from the side over here and give it a little tap with a pry bar. Very gentle. I just wanna break that O-ring free. Slide my pry bar in here and gently tap it. There we go, that's all it took. Now we can continue with the back and forth on threading of these two mounting nuts. Once you get to the last thread of the last mounting nut, it, there will still be tension on it and it'll kind of pop out. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be a very gentle exit. Pull it out a little more. Keeps getting stuck on that O-ring. Okay. I'm taking this mounting nut off, the lower one. At this point, I'm gonna take the upper one off as well. You're gonna watch it pop out in a second. There we go. Okay, these are both off. And now, you can simply grab it, pull it straight out. And there it is. Note which way this hook goes on the tensioner, came out at the top, so make sure you reinstall it with it at the top. I have a rag that has some brake parts cleaner on it, and I'm just going to clean off this surface, get all the oils off of there, so that the new O-ring can seal up nicely. You don't want any oil contamination there. All right, we are ready to reinstall. I actually put a very thin layer of RTV on this mounting surface. I know it doesn't look pretty, but I tried to get the thinnest possible layer. This will actually help this tensioner out long-term, help it seal up for longer. So now remember, this little hook goes up at the top. If for some reason you can't remember, don't worry too much about it because it can only bolt on in one direction. Line it up with the mounting hole, slide it in, push it in all the way. As you can see, it obviously goes in further than when you took the original one out because it's compressed. It hasn't uh, expanded yet. So you can easily reattach the two mounting nuts. Let's bottom these out, and the torque for these is going to be 80 inch-pounds. I'm gonna go back and forth to tighten, just like I did when I loosened, for the same reason. I don't wanna apply too much pressure to one stud. I want it to be even, and I want that O-ring to seat itself in evenly you don't want to pinch it or crush it or anything. That's bottomed out right there. Let's bottom out the top one, and we'll grab the torque wrench, and again, 80 inch pounds is the torque for this. Don't over tighten them, and because they're small, and they can break or strip out, and if you under tighten it, not only could it potentially leak, but you don't want those to back out and have the tensioner fly out of there with the engine running. That would cause catastrophic damage. Doesn't matter which one you torque first, 
that's one. Okay, that's two. Let's double check them because as you tighten one, sometimes the other one will loosen up. That one's still torqued. And that one's still torqued. Perfect. So they are both torqued to spec. This is ready to go. Now I'm going to run you through the procedure of applying tension to this tensioner. I'm going to show you on the old one so that you can imagine what's happening on the new one inside the engine. So when you have this in the engine bolted up, it sits like this. And as you can see, this hook opens up downward like that. So what we want to do is rotate the engine counterclockwise just a little bit. What that's going to do is it's going to actually apply tension to the timing chain on the tensioner that will push it in. As you can see, that will release this hook because gravity will pull it down as it sits like this. It has a slope downward. And then once you go counterclockwise, about a half a turn or so, don't go more than that, then we want to turn clockwise, which will actually release tension off of the timing chain on that side, and this will happen. The tensioner will expand to its proper distance, and we are ready to go. Now you may not hear anything when this hook unhooks itself, but you will definitely hear the tensioner popping out and expanding. It'll kind of sound something like this. So I'm not going to talk. I'm going to attach my microphone to the back of the engine so you can actually hear it. Okay, let's put our ratchet on the crank bolt and go counterclockwise. I don't know if you heard that, but I heard a little click. I'm going to keep going a little more, but I think that was the hook releasing. That was definitely the hook releasing. Let's go clockwise now. And now, listen for that snapping noise of the tensioner releasing. That's it. That's all it took. I went a little bit further just to make sure that everything spins freely, and it does. So now, all we have to do is start up the vehicle. Now just turn on the engine and make sure everything runs smoothly. Everything seems to be perfect. Now if you heard that slight rattle on startup, that's normal, and that is only because the new tensioner has no oil pressure built into it. So for a couple seconds it's gonna rattle, and then it should never happen again. It's only on the first startup after you install it. Everything seems to be running very smoothly here. So I'm gonna shut it down, take it for a road test, but there you have it. That's how you replace the tensioner. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.